In our last episode, we redefined health for a just world. In this episode, we'll put that definition to the test. What does health look like when we reclaim our agency of it? How does it operate? And where does it fail? I'm Claire. And I'm Maya. In the second round of faculty conversations, we spoke with professors Pam Barenbaum, Sam Byrne, and Christy Bright. Pam is the director of the Global Health Program and professor of the practice of global health at Middlebury College. She has a wealth of knowledge in the considerations of health policies and practices at the state level. Sam is an environmental epidemiologist and a professor of biology and global health at Middlebury College. Sam's expertise lies in community-based participatory research, which we'll discuss in more depth later in this episode. And last but not least, Christy Bright is a professor of cultural and medical anthropology at Middlebury and affiliated graduate faculty in anthropology and global health at the University of Toronto. We were able to tap into these three experts' vast knowledge of how health plays out differently based on geography and identity. In our conversations with Pam, we mostly focused on risk perception and how and when people distance themselves from their negative health behaviors. In Risk Perception, It's Personal by Valerie Brown, psychologist Paul Slavic notes that emotions are an extraordinarily sophisticated form of intelligence, born out of a millennia of quickly assessing high risks. Slavic adds that anxiety about risk may in some cases be a proxy for other social concerns. And these cognitive biases, or unconscious errors in thinking that arise from problems related to memory, attention, and other mental mistakes, create issues for health management. The issues arrive when public health officials are looking at risk in an entirely different way. They're interested in hazards times exposure equals consequence. Meanwhile, lay people are simply interested in the probability of something bad happening to them. This difference creates a dissonance between people, their risk-taking, and their health. Risk communication from scientists and public health officials doesn't and often can't account for the nebulous, individual, and subjective definition of something bad happening. This brings in the ever-important question of individual choice, and notably, who has it? And our conversations with Pam left us curious about why and how we continue to emphasize the role of individual choice when many marginalized members of society lack the ability to apply it. Next, we spoke with Sam Byrne, who led us through a discussion of community-based participatory research, or CBPR, as a recent response to the shortcomings of more traditional Western scientific research methods. Throughout the history of environmental public health research, for example, At-risk communities at the focus of health research have often faced significant financial, sociocultural, and health burdens as a result of the studies. Rather than being in service of the people they're studying, such supposedly neutral, unbiased research removes all nuance and agency from the lives of the individuals affected. And one example of how traditional health research can fail Uh, could be found in the case of polluted fish in the Akwesasne Mohawk Reservation of northern New York and Canada. Environmental contamination from PCBs in the 1980s led a team of researchers to implement official fish advisories, asking community members to halt fish consumption from the contaminated river. Such risk reduction, rather than risk avoidance, had harmful consequences for these people. One of these effects relates to fishing's vital cultural significance within native communities. Implementing the fishing advisory distanced the Mohawk people from an intergenerational spiritual practice without providing any sort of alternative. Additionally, removing fish as a food staple significantly impacted the community's overall diet, leading to changes in the community's relationship with diabetes, obesity, and other illnesses. Community-based participatory research offers a different way of approaching health. An article by Liam O'Fallon and Alan Deary details six principles of CBPR, including the following stipulations. Promotes active collaboration and participation at every stage of research. Fosters co-learning. 
ensures projects are community-driven, disseminates results in useful terms, ensures research and intervention strategies are culturally appropriate, and defines community as a, a unit of identity. In these ways, CBPR offers the possibility of involving communities in their own health outcomes. This centers health on the choice of the individuals within a community at risk, not on the decision of an outside party unfamiliar with the lived experience of the individual or that particular community. To wrap up our conversations with faculty, we spoke to Christy Bright about critical versus applied anthropology and community-based wraparound services. The field of anthropology has had a complicated history regarding its alignment with colonialism, militarism, globalization, and neoliberalism. However, more recent shifts in the di discipline, particularly within medical anthropology, seek to focus on therapeutic placemaking in spaces outside the realm of traditional Western biomedicine. This critically applied anthropology works towards expanding our understanding of where health happens. Christy is a Middlebury native, providing us with an invaluable anecdote about how the health care landscape of Addison County has shifted and evolved based on this widening understanding of where health happens. Organizations that center on housing, food, mental health care, peer-to-peer -peer support, early childhood education, land grants, and more can all fall under the umbrella of health care, and as Christie's resources argue, are all essential in combination. Well, the completion of this podcast means that we are coming to the end of our independent study this semester. Our next and final steps will be crafting a zine detailing the wide range of local healthcare resources for community members in Addison County. It feels important to start looking locally to apply the information we've absorbed these last few months. Healthcare, as we've come to understand it, does not have to simply mean a trip to the hospital. Healthcare includes housing, food sovereignty, mental health support, living wages, early education, and much more. Our plan is to distribute this zine to local libraries and a few community hubs, as well as maintain a digital version to be shared online. And our hope is that the zine informs community members about the many factors that make up their own health and empowers them to make their own informed decisions regarding the care that best serves their needs. We've been really excited about our findings this semester, but we also think we've only scratched the surface of a much deeper field of inquiry. Health, as we've explored this semester, is at its core interdisciplinary. We've been grateful for the opportunity to really lean into such cross-disciplinary inquiry with our independent study, speaking with faculty from a wide range of departments, something we aren't typically able to do in a more traditional course housed in a single academic department. Moving forward, we hope other students get the chance to experience this model of learning, taking advantage of diverse perspectives and applying theoretical frameworks to the realities of people in their own communities. Whether in academic, clinical, familial, or organizational settings, health means something different to everyone. As we learned with Pam Berenbaum, privilege and differing social positionalities put people at distinctly different levels of risk and impact their own perception of those risks. With Sam Byrne, we discussed how traditional Western science undervalues the agency of the very communities it purports to study. And with Christy Bright, we were introduced to how contemporary medical anthropologists seek to acknowledge the blurry boundaries between human health factors and risks, supporting wraparound community services and collaboration between numerous networks of support. Thanks for joining us in our investigation of health. We hope you enjoyed this podcast, and we hope that you're now looking at your own health with a bit more curiosity. Thanks for listening. Uh, a list of the resources we've used will be linked below this podcast.